Blessings to you, Apostle Praise, um, Pastor uh, Priceless, everyone else in the room. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Um, we thank God for His strong, weighty glory that is already here and uh, for His miracle anointing that is among us. And we're actually going to be uh, receiving revelation on how to do miracles, what the ingredients of a miracle uh, is, what it requires, and then we're going to do a few activations. So wake up, wake up, wake up, uh, uh, so that we can really activate the revelation that God has been downloading uh, to us in the book of John, and as we have been studying and just uh, embodying how Jesus, the miracle worker, operates in regions and spheres uh, to bring God glory. Uh, so Lord, we just thank you for your presence that's already here. We thank you for the revelation that we uh, have been receiving, uh, that we need your spirit and your truth to do miracles, Lord God. And we thank you that Holy Spirit is reigning strong in and around us, uh, Lord God. And we shift as we wake up, uh, Lord God. We shift to a posture of truth that you are the miracle worker, Lord God, and you are tangibly among us right now, Lord God. Yes, yes, yes. You are eager, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, to touch us today with your recreative power. Yes, with your dunamis power. Yes, Lord God, you are eager to get glory out of us as you would do miracles in us and as you would do miracles through us for your glory. So we thank you for this revelation today, uh, Lord God. We thank you that your presence and uh, just the grace and strength an identity of who you are, uh, Lord God, as Holy Spirit and truth only gets stronger as we go throughout this teaching today and as we embody this revelation and activate it consistently, uh, Lord God, as a lifestyle. We are miracle workers. We are miracle workers. Even just decree that over yourself. I am a miracle worker. I am a miracle worker. Greater works then Jesus, I will do, yes, for the glory of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. So if I could get one reader to read John, the second chapter, 1 through 11, in the New King James Version, that would be great. That is John chapter 2, verse 1 through 11, in the New King James Version. Thank you. Again. Water turned to wine. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your, your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come his mother said to the servant whatever he says to you do it now there were set there six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the jews contain, containing 12 or 13 gallons apiece Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. Verse 8, and he said to them, draw some out now, and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. 
verse 9. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he did not know where it came from. But the servant who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called the bridegroom. Verse 10. And he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine and when the guests have well drunk then the inferior you have kept the good wine until now verse 11 this beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. Thank you. Thank you for reading. Lord God, we just bless our reader. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that uh, she is indeed a miracle worker, Lord God. We thank you for the miracles that she has already been seeing in and around her life. Lord Jesus Christ, and as she volunteered today to read, uh, Lord God, this passage, an increase, uh, Lord God, shift, Lord God, of your manifested power, it's just uh, embodying her, uh, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God, that she will be called upon to do miracle signs and wonders, that she will volunteer to do miracle signs and wonders. We thank you, uh, Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, uh, yes, Lord God, that she will be known among multitudes as one, uh, Lord God, who produce miracle signs and wonders for your glory. We just seal that prayer over her, decreeing that it is so in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. So in this passage of scripture, we have Jesus uh, actually doing his first miracle. Uh, he, he felt that it really was not time for him to be exposed as the miracle worker. But, you know, we can't say no to our mothers. And so uh, he went ahead and performed uh, this miracle. And the wine that he produced was greater than the wine that was originally given to the guest and so um, uh, we also see that even as he didn't want to be ex exposed uh, in verse 11 it, it does let us know that the disciples recognized who he was through this sign and so we can learn a lot of revelation about how miracles manifest uh, just as we would uh, consider this story today. So I'm going to share uh, some keys that I received uh, from uh, this passage and uh, then we're going to activate those keys uh, uh, and uh, produce miracles now, tonight, for some this morning for others in Jesus Christ's name. So my first point, uh, as we consider this passage, we must remember that it is always God's will to get glory out of our lives. It's always his will to get glory. And so, uh, he will, uh, um, open up opportunity for us to shine for his glory and for us to demonstrate that he is a supernatural God. In Isaiah 43 and 7, it says, Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. And so God created us for his glory. And so he is going to get glory out of us. In Matthew 5, 14 through 16, it says, You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then put it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. 
In the same way, let your good deeds shine for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. And so God has created us uh, to um, embody his light and be illuminated by his light and his glory uh, so that we can shine. And he will uh, put us in situations where we would shine for his glory so that he can get praise and glory out of our lives. My next key uh, that we must remember about miracles uh, is that they are activated in the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit, the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit. Dunamis is the Greek uh, uh, word for Holy Spirit uh, and his power, okay? Uh, 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 it's, the, it's the Greek word for power. Uh, it's also a, a Greek word for capability, ability, miracles, okay? And so uh, we must uh, understand that we need the presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, and we need the word and the will of God, okay? And we must also partner his presence, his word and his will with uh, the truth of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit guiding us into all truth. And so we have studied, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit extensively in this, uh, uh, in the Holy Spirit room, in this uh, room. And, and so you can go to Apostle Praise's um, YouTube channel and partake of those uh, revelations and insights and if they're not on her channel they're definitely on uh, my channel but uh, there are teachings there on the Holy Spirit and so we know that we shall receive power when the Holy Spirit uh, comes up on us and so uh, that is when we accept Jesus Christ as a Savior and then as we begin to commune with the Holy Spirit and actually uh, you know, receive our prayer language. Uh, we receive a greater depth and infilling of the Holy Spirit, uh, where He just uh, begins to even work in us in a greater uh, measure and weight of glory. Okay, uh, the Holy Spirit also guides us into all truth, and we know that from John sixteen thirteen and fifteen. And the reason why He's guiding us into all truth is so that He can teach us what is the truth that we need to live by based on what God has said is right and wrong and based on who Jesus Christ is, okay? And and how Jesus Christ and his presence, the Holy Spirit operates on the inside of us to empower us to live a holy and pure life and to uh, operate in our gifts and callings for the glory of God. Okay, uh, in Genesis 1, 1 through 5, it says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And so you, you see the presence of God. You hear God speaking into the presence, and then uh, you, you hear him saying, let there be light. And as he, he commanded light to come forth, light came forth. And it says, God saw that the light, um, saw the light and that it was good and God divided the light from darkness and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day so the presence of God the word of God the light of God the glory of God has been here since the beginning okay and where there is void you can uh, utilize uh, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the word of God to shift in light, to shift in substance, to fill up voids. All right. And so that's what miracles do. All right. That was a miracle that occurred. All right. And so in John 1, 1 through 5, it says, In the beginning before all time, and this is the Amplified Bible, was the word Christ and the word was with God and the word was God himself he was continually existing 
<laughs> I love that. Let me say that again. This is first. This is John 1, 1 through 5, the Amplified Bible. In the beginning, before all time, was the word Christ. And the word was with God. And the word was God himself. He was continually existing. My God. In the beginning, co-eternally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him. And without him, not even one thing was made that has come into being. In him was life and the power to bestow life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness. And the darkness did not understand it or overpower it or appropriate it or absorb it and is unreceptive to it. Okay, so miracles don't have to be understood. But when God in his word partners to produce a miracle, a miracle has to manifest. Okay, and uh, understanding that when you are doing miracles, these Jesus has has always been here, and He is just supernaturally okay, a, a manifested, a righteous, incomparable God. Okay, and He is continually existing, and so these miracles are being birthed out of who He has always been. He's just not coming into being when he produced the miracle for you or as you have accepted him as your savior he has always been lord savior miracle worker messiah redeemer okay he has always been existing continuously and continually in his god identity as a miracle worker so it's so important to remember that you can do anything because you have God and God can do anything because he can do the impossible and we know that what's impossible for man is possible for God okay uh, God uh, uh, is not a man that he would lie all right and so uh, his word does not return void uh, if he said he gonna do it he gonna do it uh, and uh, we know that he's able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or think according to Ephesians 3 and 20. And so uh, even as you're remembering that God can do anything, it's also important to know that he is in control. And I think this is where we get challenged with miracles and we, we get fearful because we're like, what if the miracle don't manifest? What if, what if this, what is that? But God is in control. And so we are just conduits for his miracles to flow through us, but he is in control. And so he just want us to trust the truth that his signs will follow us if we believe. And that in his name, we'll cast out devils, we'll speak in new tongues, you know, we'll take up serpents and not be harmed. We'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. He, he just want us to believe the truth of that. But he is in control. And so you're not in control of the outcome of the miracle. You are just a conduit that is believing and utilizing his presence and his truth on the inside of you that a miracle can manifest. OK, it, it is important to remember God's timing is always perfect. And I believe this is another place where we get challenged with miracles, because what, when we think miracles should manifest, it's not always when God thinks miracles can man, should manifest. When we think the miracle should uh, manifest, it's not always when God thinks. It should manifest, but it is important to understand that God's timing is important and it's perfect. Okay. He knows when a miracle is needed and beneficial, and he knows when it's not necessary and essential. I'll say that again. God knows when a miracle is not needed 
and he know and been or uh, he knows when a miracle is needed and beneficial and when it's not necessary and essential and so even as we see jesus uh at this uh celebration and they need uh wine uh uh you know his mom said hey do this miracle what have you he he felt that it was not time but then he still recognized this was the perfect time to be do a miracle to be a blessing to the people because uh the the i I won't get ahead of myself so i won't say that so that is uh very important because you would be expecting that miracle as soon as you pray it or command it to come forth or what have you and it may or may not come at that time uh or whatever you may have to batter for that miracle there are some miracles i've had to contend uh for i've I've shared several testimonies in this room already there was there was a time where I, i i spoke scriptures every four hours over myself for months like 9 10 11 12 months uh or what have you uh and it still ended up going to surgery and uh, i went to surgery thinking uh i had cancer and they were going to take my organs and when i woke up i had all my organs i didn't have no cancer you know yada 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 and it was because god gave me that strategy and i utilized it i didn't let what the doctors were saying litigate me out of it I didn't let the people who was watching me um, who couldn't really handle the pain of what I was dealing with tell me to stop doing it you know because there would be times where people were like you need to go to sleep you you need to do that you need to do that and I'd be like my, my alarm would go off and I would get up and do those those scriptures and so um, his timing is perfect I, I wish his I wish his timing would have came when I, I did the first set of scriptures all right that would have been great (laughs) but that didn't happen all right uh but the miracle did manifest so what is god's timing versus your own timing okay and are you trying to control his timing uh because uh, these things is is what will get us in a place of discouragement where we don't stay the course for miracles it's important to remember that god keeps his promises and his prophecies they will not return void okay uh it's also important to invite and include god in every decision and circumstance in your life so that he can do the impossible so that he can do miracles and and we learned about that last week when we studied about the fishes and the loaves and that uh teaching is on apostle perry's youtube I, i highly encourage you to go and listen to it uh but we learned that we need to invite god into every decision and situation because this will help us to practice when we need a miracle and not be guided by our circumstances our emotions our thoughts but the more conscious we are in inviting him in uh the more we will be lenient and yielded to him doing the impossible in and through us Okay, it's important to uh, remember that miracle signs and wonders are not for show for us, but they are to display God's supernatural power, his glory and who he is as Messiah, Lord and Savior. And so even uh, with the story last week with the fishes and loaves, he was he was revealed as Savior, as Lord, as provider. Uh, we see him here uh, in, in this time of celebration being revealed as the Messiah to the disciples. OK, um, the experience and uh, producing of consistent miracles requires enduring faith, expectation, confidence in God and a pursuit for the impossible. So it's it's so important that you exercise your muscle of uh, of uh, operating in miracles, operating in greater works. The more you operate in your faith, uh, your boldness and confidence for miracles, the more miracles you'll see in and around you. Uh, remember that obedience is what you need in order to uh, really be conscious with God 
and um, it's vital in those miracles coming to pass. And uh, oftentimes, God will tell us something, but we won't follow through with it. We'll think, why are you telling me to do this? This doesn't make sense. How is this going to produce a miracle? You know, or what have you. Uh, when, when I was um, doing those scriptures every four hours uh, over myself for months, and we're not talking about just a couple of scriptures. I had pages of scriptures, okay, uh, or what have you, that I was reciting. So this was, you know, that would, that would, it would take time to declare these over myself. It looked foolish. It looked it looked like it wasn't doing anything. Um, uh, when, when people were watching me, they was like, you know, you need rest. Um, you're in pain. Why are you quoting pages of scriptures while you're in pain, you know, and, and things of that. It didn't look like it was producing anything, but I was being obedient to what God had told me to do. And so obedience is better than sacrifice because had I not did it, I probably would have woke up with no organs, you know, after, you know, that that year or so when I uh, had to actually go and have the surgery. And so um, somebody's life is at stake. Something is at stake when you don't follow through with what God is telling you to do. And so it's better to be obedient uh, than to have sacrificed a life, sacrificed your own self. Okay. Um, now, miracles in, in, in the Bible, they are different and unique. So you cannot box God in. So even now, I want you to, you know, shift out of, I can't box God in. I can't box him into methods, into protocols, because even as you would see Jesus do different miracles, they all manifested differently. Even if it was healing, it manifested differently. If it was a supernatural miracle, it manifested differently. And so you might read books and they might tell you to do it this way, to do it that way. You need to do it the way God tell you to do it, or you just need to do it in faith. Okay. Uh, um, you know, um, but you don't need to get into any rituals about it. Okay. Uh, but just be led of the Holy spirit and allow the activation of who you are as a son of God and the right to have miracle provision working in and around you to legislate God's perfect work on your behalf. Okay. Don't get discouraged when miracles don't manifest. Okay. Uh, because God is in control. And so it's important, even as we learned uh, last week, um, that you thank God for what you do have. Okay. I had my life. I had, you know, I had other miracle situations operating in and around me. Um, my, my, my bosses were going to, um, see my clients and and they was allowing me to bill for it like I was doing it and then I was doing the paperwork at home I had so many miracles uh, that was operating in and around me even though it was not the main miracle and so what what are you thanking God for as you offer up the fishes and the loaves that you do have and then you are doing what he's telling you to do so that that miracle can be distributed out of what you put in the presence of God and what you lift up in thanksgiving as truth. This is my truth. I do have this fish and loaves. I do have this part, okay? And so I'm offering that up in spirit and in truth. And then I'm allowing the miracle to be distributed out of it. And so you cannot lean to your own understanding, okay? You, you, you have to acknowledge God and who he is as the majestic one, the, the incomparable one, the great and mighty miracle worker, uh, you know, uh, uh, what have you. And, uh, uh, and let him make your path straight, okay? And so um, one of the things that we see in this present um, passage with John 2 is that Jesus used water and the water pot to turn the water into wine. And so sometimes uh, what is being used 
is uh, really a manifestation of uh, some type of spiritual significance. So water represents the water of the spirit. It represents who Jesus is as the living water, bringing life and that more abundantly to this situation, bringing celebration, joy, um, uh, bringing a greater um, tasting wine that was better than what they had before. Okay. And then the water pot is significant of an empty vessel that was now being filled up with the living water so that a miracle can manifest. And we know that in the natural realm, you can't just fill up the water pot with water and turn it into wine. That is definitely a supernatural act. Uh, if you was to go study how to uh, create wine online, uh, you just can't pour <laughs> that, that just don't happen okay and so uh, but this is what Jesus did and he was using the foolish things to confound the wise and so uh, even as we would consider that scripture in 1 Corinthians 1 and 27 and how God would choose the foolish things of this world to confound the wise uh, foolish means stupid dull heedless absurd uh it it doesn't make sense it lacks good sense or judgment and so oftentimes when god is speaking to you about doing something if it sounds stupid if it sounds absurd it's biblical <laughs> okay because he is going to use those foolish things and these are weapons to confound the wise to confound uh those who are onlookers to confuse the enemy because the foolish things are weapons okay they're weapons to discombobulate the enemy to dismantle whatever is there that's that would hinder the miraculous from manifesting and so you, you want to trust what God is speaking. Confounding means to shame down, to disgrace, to honor. And so as he would use the foolish things, uh, he is pulling those strongholds down. So the, the, uh, whatever is dark, whatever is vain, whatever is ungodly, is now uh, being stripped down pulled down okay and overthrown so that the darkness can be filled up with the miraculous light to produce the miracle but if you don't activate the foolish thing that he says and you just you thinking i don't want nobody laughing me i don't want nobody to you know or whatever i'd be at funerals like lord do you still want me to lay hands because I mean, we, we can do you know, whatever you want to do, okay? You know, or what have you. And that sounds foolish, but I'm waiting on the day that God says, yes, go on up there in, in the lay hands and see what happens, you know, or what have you. Um, now, the people around me might think that's foolish, but if when that person raised up, I don't know, we all might run out of there, but a miracle is manifested, okay? And so, uh, but if I don't do it, it doesn't overthrow death so light can come. And so I would encourage you to study 1 Corinthians uh, 1, 27 through 31 in the Amplified. That's uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 27 through 31 in the Amplified Bible because it, it talks about how the foolish things confound uh, the wise and so that's my teaching um, I, I would just like to do maybe one activation or maybe two if that is uh, okay uh, Apostle Praise I'm not sure if you have anything to share before I would do that or if anyone else have anything to share Okay. All right, so my first activation is the presence of Lord is already here. It's, it's, it's very strong. And so sometimes you have to know that you just resting in the presence of the Holy Spirit and receiving truth that he heals, he delivers, he sets free can shift forth the miracle. And so even before we started, before I started teaching, Apostle Praise was saying, let go of 
whatever is still trying to be anxiety or a weight or what have you. Oftentimes when I encourage people to do that, I encourage them to take deep breaths and actually open their mouths and blow it out because you're releasing the tension, you're releasing anything that's not causing, that is hindering you from uh, um, resting and coming to a place of just surrender in the presence of God. And so uh, we, we want to, uh, just even just spend a minute where we're just focused on uh, Holy Spirit and truth and uh, you know uh, just taking some deep breaths and, and just blowing it out and just letting him choose what he wants to heal in us and then checking ourselves to see if a miracle manifests healing deliverance um, you know a, a breakthrough uh, and so you'd be surprised at uh, how many uh, miracles can manifest in just doing that. Even uh, if you study, uh, there there are some studies that, as you as you would take deep breaths, blow it out, and just rest and release tension, uh, pain can be released from your body, emotions, toxins, on and on and on. Okay, and so this is not new age. It's the breath of God blowing in and out of you, unless you got another breath another spirit okay and if you do we wanted to come out right now in the presence of God so uh, just begin to focus on Holy Spirit and who he is as the healer the deliverer the miracle worker and the truth that God can just heal you miraculously right now from whatever it is you need healing from or deliverance from a miracle from he can give you a new kidney right now he can give you a new heart right now he can give you a new brain right now in his presence his presence is not about what you feel it's about what you know and we know that God is always with us he never leaves or forsake us so you're operating by faith, not by, oh, I don't feel anything. Uh, the Holy Spirit is with you. So just take a deep breath and just blow it out of your mouth. Just focus on the truth of God and who he is. It's the miracle worker. Take another deep breath, just blow it out and just surrender more in his presence. You're not doing the miracle, God is doing the miracle. Jesus, his presence is doing the miracle. He ain't got dead with us. you to take another deep breath and focus on just relinquishing control and letting Holy Spirit guide you into the truth that you're receiving a miracle right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit.
right, does anyone want to share? Did anyone experience any transformation, any emotional, physical release, a healing? 